Okay, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you hear me, please. Uh, yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so this is our last class of the semester. After very intensive work, especially the last homework, I very appreciate your effort. Okay, let's start with quiz and then we will talk and discuss everything. You can start working. I hope that you see my screen sharing. Describe uh, and explain meaning of total variation in one dimensional case, continuous and discrete, and uh, in two dimensional case. In two dimensional, it was only continuous in the lecture, so you can stay on with it. Okay, start working and I. Pause my recording. Okay, so this is our last meeting, last class. Uh, so it it kind of more about uh, applications of uh, optimization, which is good. Uh, uh, actually, I made this uh, videos by request of students. They wanted to see some applications, and I have even more videos on my homepage about applications. For example, there is a very interesting topic: independent component analysis or blind source separation, also use using optimization, special optimization techniques. And one more, there is about. Uh, radiation therapy, uh, I, IMRT, intensity modulated radiation therapy, which happens to be conic quadratic conic programming problem. So many interesting applications. We, we just touch one of them, but this one is very important, most widely used in in my environment at least. <coughs> uh, and uh, those you are, uh, of you who are from uh, electrical engineering, you know very well what is convolution. <coughs> and computer scientists know only those who may touch uh, convolutional neural networks, I guess. But uh, convolution, very basic uh, mathematical notion, and uh, it's very good to know it. Uh, okay, so ju uh, just touching uh, briefly what was in the lecture, or maybe you already have your questions. Let let, let me say a few words. So based on <coughs> total variation, we consider uh, problems of signal denoising, deconvolution, and uh, computed tomography. And uh, all those three examples, so and total variation, which you already answered, I hope, is just uh, is just uh, where is total variation? Where it was total variation of images? I don't have this slide. I cannot believe. Okay. Okay, I need to put one more slide in my presentation. But uh, any case, uh, uh, total variation. Ah, he, here's just example of one dimensional total variation if, if I have a function of time. So the, the, the main idea and the illustration of total variation, which I hope you you already showed in your answers, was that uh, if I have a function, oops, if I have a function which somehow oscillates, and uh, I count all differences between this and this, this change, 
and then uh, this change and so on all together then uh, total variation in integral of absolute value of the derivative exactly will tell me this something wrong with my pen ah maybe with color darker color i, I guess and uh, so what was the one more motivation if i have such a function blurred function and step function with the same amplitude they have the same tot uh, the same total variation so total variation penalty will not uh, prefer blur function in contrast to other penalties to for example if i use the uh, energy of my first derivative or second derivative then i will introduce blue any 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 question any comment uh, did, did you know this stuff before you watched uh, the lecture have you heard about it Tell me again, your sound was not very good. I'm saying uh, I heard the term, but I didn't uh, get uh, deep into this. Uh, okay, so so thing. you you didn't see this uh, mathematical explanation and the motivation. Okay, yeah, then, this motivation is, is, is gives me a better motivation. Mm -hmm. uh, then I very very happy because those who work with the image uh, signal processing, of course they will uh, hear this term many 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 times okay and uh, uh, clear all drawings and uh, so and uh, very and uh, of course we have a generalization of total variation for images when we, instead of absolute value of derivative we use norm of two-dimensional gradients it's not gradient that we use in optimization you should be careful <coughs> in optimization if i have a function of x which i will have for example on on this sl slide then uh, x is the entire image say million pixels and uh, gradient with respect to x will be a vector of million uh, components and here the gradient is uh, something di different i look on x as function of two variables so at every pixel it has gradient uh, two dimensional vector and norm of this two the two dimensional vector comes into expression of total variation okay and uh, actually if one will look carefully on total variation of images he will discover that conic quadratic programming appears there okay so it was uh, rather Mark, short. can you explain why uh, why conic quadratic programming because uh, you see here we have two norm yes yes and we want to minimize we, we have a term yes where two norm say at every pixel this two norm will come and we, we will uh, introduce uh, okay okay you want me to write something if if we if you take uh, just just the motivation why, why no 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 it's it good, it's good. Uh, thank you for question i i hope it will take one minute one two minutes not much more uh so if i want to minimize this term yes i i may minimize say tau i uh, uh, and uh, set uh, constraint tau i greater or equal uh, nabla of x at the norm of nabla x at uh, point i at pixel i and i have uh, will have uh, very many such type of constraints and 
those are conic quadratic constraints and then we will uh, uh, we will put uh, ob objective and in the objective we uh, what we mi minimize the uh, uh, sum of tau i yes so you discredit discredit the 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 gradient the, 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 the function the function and then you use the epigraph you use the epigraph right? yeah yeah yes 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 something like this so you you see the ideas are very close each other okay so we really only touched on this topic i, I will say where uh, may i clear those formulas i still did the uh, don't have experience with the normal whiteboard where all changes may say independently this is my homework for next next year okay so I clear all drawings and uh, one more word uh, maybe about uh, computed tomography yes uh, many of you met uh, CT yes and also positron emission tomography somehow works in this way so we we do a lot of uh, you you can think we, we do a lot of uh, x-ray pictures in different directions and from those pictures we are able to reconstruct what is inside body just uh, setting it as a, as a system of equations where right hand side is observed with noise and we right, about about this this comma yeah. we actually have a light that comes from different locations and different uh, uh, squares on the area and, and hit the J location, right? This is why we sum. Yes, but but it's not light. Uh, for for light, it may work somehow if you have completely transparent environment which doesn't change direction. It's uh, usually it's X-ray for you, for example. Yes. Yes, photons or uh, any any X-ray. Okay. Or... Okay. Yes. Yes. So we actually sum from all the area. Is actually on all axes that actually hit the J. Uh, so we uh, let me again resume my drawing. We send the uh, X-ray from here, and if I look on particular beam, here I place detector. Here is my detector. And I just count number of photons which come to this point or to this uh, small uh, flat area, for example. Uh, I actually I am cheating a bit. In actual, in actual X-ray, they will not sum up. They will attenuate. Yes, every pix every pixel in the image in the object will attenuate some portion of pot photons here exactly will exactly it will, it will, it will. Decay. you are right you are right thank you very much you know it's some uh, it's quite often pedagogically very good to to do wrong statement and then correct yourself then something remains in the brain thank you very much <laughs> so uh, and then so this is an exponential uh, type of pro process but if we take logarithm we discovered then uh, some stuff uh, just some stuff the model of noise will be more complicated because it will be not poissonian noise like usually but it will be logarithm poissonian noise so a lot of interesting mathematics there and by the way now i'm a little bit back in this activity many interesting new questions come <coughs> Okay. Nice example. <laughs> yes. Thanks. Uh, let me clear this. Uh, Stop annotating. Uh, what is the best system? By 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 the way, I use this uh, um, zoom annotation. I'm not sure that it's the the, the best way to do 
job, if, if I have a PC, anybody can recommend me better environment to keep my uh, old notes on slides, no, no, not uh, disrupt them when I move from page to page, maybe offline or afterwards. I, I will be <coughs> glad to hear from you the recommendations if you have. You can use the pen and the tablet. But, but I have, uh, the, uh, concretely now I have PC. I have PC and the touch screen, which is uh, adjusted to PC. אני לא יודע איך קוראים לזה, אבל יש כל מיני לוחות כאלה שאתה מחבר דרך ה-USB ואתה יכול לרשום עליהם. Yes, yes, this is exactly what I have. I am asking about which programming environment. Okay, let's leave it on the end, but I will be glad to hear recommendation. Okay, so I think... We finished with this part. Uh, any other question or comment? And then I want uh, to move uh, to another important part. We, we had it on a video lecture, but didn't have flipped class on this. Uh, uh, computing uh, Jacobian on uh, computational graphs, which is close related to neural network stuff. Because we didn't discuss it uh, interactively, I hope I am afraid that it's not so deep in your understanding. Okay, okay. Then, then I I move to this new topic. Sharp uh, sharp change of of the picture. <coughs> uh, somehow wider. Yeah, that was not in the Coursera. Uh, it was. Uh, those lectures were in the same uh, lesson when uh, usual gradients, when we considered you usual gradients. Okay, uh, not, not on the last one. It was. Uh, no, 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 no. It uh, actually was close to the beginning of the semester. And. Uh, let me uh, remind you from the beginning, uh, there was notion of Jacobian, by, by the way, uh, which we used also, for example, in uh, Gauss-Newton. So uh, Jacobian is derivative of vector function, yes? We have vector variable and vector function with many entries, like it's here. <clears throat> and if I compute gradient of, uh, for example, first entry F1 and put it as a row, not column, but row in, in a matrix. And then gradient of F2, like second row, I get matrix of Jacobian. And nice thing about Jacobians, which is very easy to show on the base of a full differential of uh, those scalar functions, F1 and so on. <coughs> The differential of uh, capital F is just this matrix multiplied by dx. It's very nice and very easy. And even the chain rule is uh, easier than chain rule for gradients, which we derive. Because if I have a, a T of F of X, where do I have? Did I write it? Okay, so I have phi of f of x. Then uh, Jacobian is just product. Jacobian of external function by Jacobian of internal. It's very easy. It's because we put uh, gradients in the rows. In, if usual gradients we would put in the rows, maybe we will have similar simplification. But in optimization, we add something multiplied by gradients to our x variable. So it's convenient for us to, ha to have it in columns. And that's why with gradients, we have all this transposer. Uh, because uh, it was very sharp change of picture, I leave you to meditate a little bit on this uh, slide. And it would be good if anybody is able to ask questions. Yes, uh, the Jacobian is actually the Hessian, right? Uh, Hessian is Jacobian of gradient. Right. 
Jacobian, if I just have a function, Jacobian is, is first de derivative and Hessian is second derivative. We just mm. know that because it's a vector, second derivative, it's a vector. The yeah. derivative of first derivative. Yes. Right, right. I'm saying, yeah, yeah. If, if f of x was a, a gradient, then it's, it should be said that the Hessian is. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. And this we, we had in uh, motivation of. Uh, Newton Raphson. Yes. Okay. Any other question? Okay, let, let's move. And then we return to gradient because we are used to again to write gradient. If if I have a scalar function, yes, then I we used to write gradient as a column. And uh, we can also consider it as a Jacobian of function with only one entry. Do you hear me? So something was with my sound. Do you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, uh, so gradient is just the Jacobian transpose. I, I, can, I can see in function as one entry. And say define that my Jacobian is from one row. It's in our course once again, once again, because in many other places you will just need gradients as row vectors, and there will be no difference. But in our course, we say in this convention. And now, if I have such chain function, uh, which uh, capital F is vector function it has many entries and phi is a scalar function here it's still a k because it's from old part in video but it should be r1 r1 then uh, jacobian of phi we, we, we told this uh, Will pro, uh, product of these uh, Jacobians, but we say that gradient is Jacobian transpose. We just take transpose of this ex expression and get a very uh, important thing which we use in neural networks: so gradient of whole expression of whole uh, function psi will be Jacobian transpose multiplied by gradient of phi. Jacobian transpose of F. You see, they flopped uh, places because of transpose. Okay, now you should get used to this slide. It's good. You, you, you know, uh, in uh, learning there is a one more very important principle. If you learn some thing and forgot it completely, and uh, refreshed, uh, go, got back to it in your mind. Then your knowledge is much stronger than was originally. So now we have this very good opportunity. We have time, and we have this very good opportunity to come back to this very important issue. Okay. So finally, we have this expression. Yes. Jacobian of uh, a gradient, sorry, of this chain function. Any question about this? Okay. Then somebody should tell me it's it's clear, it's completely clear. Is it? Is I have a question. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> it was prov provocation on my side. Okay, thank you. Um, how did you swap uh, the Jacobian of phi with the gradient of phi? That's, I guess I missed something earlier along the way. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I think on pre let's try look on previous slide. Slide on previous? Ah, no, no, not, not actually. In, in our course, we use gradient as vector column of partial derivatives. Yes. And, okay. And I also 
can look on my function as particular case of uh, vector function. Just my vector has only one entry. And I may ask what is Jacobian of this function? And in, in Jacobian, uh, it's previous slide, gradient of every entry, I, I will have only entry F1. And pay attention in definition of Jacobian gradient was in the row, not in the column. So I will have one row matrix. Okay, I get it now. Okay, that's why we say the gradient is Jacobian transpose because uh, we, we have this very simple chain rule for Jacobians. Let me circle it. Yes, this is our basic derivation, which is very simple. And now we say that gradient of psi is just transpose. So we take transpose of product of two matrices, just JF transpose by J phi transpose. But J phi transpose is gradient of phi. Okay. Ah. Oh, I should remove drawing. Is that a question? Yes. And the Jacobian multiplication is a matrix, yes. Uh, Jacobian, uh, tell it again, is application of a matrix. No, I'm saying I'm saying it's a matrix. Jacob it's two matrices. Yes, it's, Matri yeah. two matrices. Ye yes, Jacobian is yes, yes. What well, what we have here is product of two matrices. You're right. Yes. Here we have in general product of two matrices. And but, but the gradient of P is a vector. Gradient is a ve vector or uh, gradient transpose is a matrix of one row. Yes. So, so P is R n to R. It's not R n to R K. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I, I again I should. Say that this remained from previous slide in the video, so it should be one, one here. Yeah. No, no, it's yeah. okay. Sorry. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. I am so grateful for your question. Okay, and let's slowly move forward. Again, I, I will clear. My drawings, unfortunately, because of technical reasons. And now, very, very basic issue. One of the central issues in computing derivatives. First of all, any computation, any function which I compute in computer may be expressed as a computational graph. I have some uh, original numbers. And I probably multiply them by some weights and apply some nonlinear functions, linear or nonlinear, some sine or sine, cosine, or maybe uh, multiply or maybe divide any, any function of one or two variables. This describes everything I do in computer. Do you agree with me? Can you Im imagine anything in, in computer which is not in this scheme? Uh, any, anything at least which is uh, used in our course? Can you take a question? So any function which we use in our course and uh, actually everywhere, every numerical function, maybe it's a computation may be expressed as a computational graph where you have a multiplication by some weights, coefficients, and probably some uh, nonlinear functions. Yes. Okay. And now assume that uh, my capital F is expressed on this uh, graph. And I ask question, I want <coughs> to multiply a vector by Jacobian of capital F. Jacobian of capital F, it's something terrible, yes? It's huge matrix. For example, if I have a function, I don't know, uh, 50 
50 function uh, entries and uh, 100 variable 50 multiplied by 100 it will be matrix with uh, 5000 entries and uh, quite easily I can get to the function with million of entries and I have very strong claim to multiply by this matrix any vector I can multiply any vector by this huge matrix at the same computational cost as just computing my function f of x. Can you believe in this? Yes, you said it in one, one of the lectures. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's a uh, it's very strange. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a function, uh, for example, fifty function entries of hundred variables, and only want to compute function. Uh, and then somebody asked me to multiply a vector by this huge matrix. And this is the same computation, about the same computation. And here we de demonstrate, the, we not, do not prove, but we demonstrate this. <coughs> because if I have this graph and ask question, what is, if I consider differential of X on the entry, and ask what will be dy. I can go node by node because this node is very easy. It's just function of two variables. And how can I uh, derive differential of this function? Where do I have sigma? For for example, here in the in this row, yes. It's just a partial derivative of this function of two variables with respect to. Uh, first argument to the first argument by differential of the first argument, which is just weight multiplied by d, and similar about se second. You see, compute uh, differential of u. It's about the same computational work as computing uh, differential <coughs> as computing the original function. It's similar way for for elementary function functions. Uh, uh, to compute derivative of sinus, yes, we need cosine. Derivative of sine is cosine. Compute cosine and com compute sine is about the same. And uh, in this way, we can progress through through our graph and get to dy. After we have dy, we multiply this vector dx by our Jacobian. And, and we have this new graph. Uh, by the way, this new graph is linear because all those expressions are already li linear. We computed derivatives of our nodes in concrete points, and now they are linear. This is linear graph. And we know that evaluating differential of a function is linear operation, is multiplying Jacobian with some vector. So I uh, actually I accomplished it multiplying Jacobian by d, dx, and what, what if I want multiply Jacobian by arbitrary vector? I just should put on entry of this graph some my uh, arbitrary vector. So I want to multiply this by r. So the, the, then I put some vector uh, r instead of uh, x three dimensional arbitrary vector r and uh, here i will uh, uh, get uh, jacobian uh, multiplied by r i'm lazy to go to my worried board i write with mouse okay this is a very central message and i want you to meditate uh, on it Okay. Okay. Minutes, and then we will go to to the break. Yes. It actually gives us the directional derivative in R. Wow. What, what? Maybe you should come next. Hello. Yes. Next year, once more to optimization course and repair your microphone. <laughs> but maybe as a teacher assistant, I don't want you to, to get bad grades and. 
Uh, okay, T uh, tell me again. Uh, you, I, I will try, or if not, then maybe other students will. Let's see, we are, we are uh, pushing R vector, which is uh, some direction. We get JR. This will give us uh, in some way the direction derivative. Uh, R is just arbitrary. It's not the direction. It's arbitrary. It may be. It may be an optimization method. It may be related to some direction in space of X. But actually, it's a arbitrary vector in in space of X. Yes, in the in the space same space. Yes. So this is a way maybe to to. Uh... You are thinking about uh, if you have gradient, uh, can you make some? Uh, the the message is very important. You 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 come to very important question. If I have a general function, uh, then multiplying by Jacobian or computing gradient is about the same as computing function. But Hessian is huge matrix. To compute yeah. Hessian is uh, expensive. But but if in my algorithm I need to multiply something by Hessian, like we do in truncated Newton, yeah. then this approach is useful and 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 working. Thank you very much for this good question. Uh, you may ask more or. We can go to break and ask more questions after break. Okay, thanks. Okay, so then uh, 10 minute break. 10 minute break. Recording. Okay. Any any more question about Jacobian? Okay. Then I, uh, I will save, I will clear, and uh, stop annotation. And uh, then we, we, we have uh, one more very, very important uh, issue. As we told, um, uh, quite often we need uh, to multiply by uh, a joint Jacobian operator. And uh, here is one more very exciting fact that if I have computational linear, already a linear computational graph for computing some linear function, which is uh, actually maybe expressed as uh, multiplying some matrix by uh, input. <coughs> Then to multiply some some other vector y tilde by transpose of this matrix is just to propagate in reverse order through the same graph. So it's technically very easy to multiply by a joint Jacobian, and here we get hint why in neural network people use back propagation. They need to multiply by a joint Jacobian. The, the the only thing if you had the summation in some in some nodes uh, in other direction is it's choose uh, by splitting just co uh, copy of entry of some node uh, goes to one branch and other branch and vice versa if here it was splitting. Uh, then in other direction we substituted this summation. Any question, any comment about this? Uh, very important and very exciting fact. I hope that uh, everybody came back after the break. Then I need to hear that yes, yes, yes. everything is clear. Yes. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. You know, poor lecturers uh, in the Zoom environment when people don't see faces of each other. You, you, you saw how much 
life I had in this last video that I you saw before coronavirus in, in class. And uh, by the way, I, I wanted to ask, was this video better than our Zoom, me Zoom meeting? So it's like the same for you. It was better. It's better, yes. So we, we need a Zoom. A Zoom is actually very good. It's a, it's give you opportunity to meet a very large class without in, in interrupting each year. The, the disturbing st students with a conversation, disturbing other students. <clears throat> but we need somehow to think about an environment where people see faces each other and maybe on recording, the faces may be removed who, who don't want to put them on internet. Okay, uh, back to our uh, computations. So we know how to multiply by a joint operator uh, and now we are ready to neural networks uh, okay that, that was one small one more small important piece that if you if you have computational graph with matrices uh, still very very similar picture is in place and quite of, uh, quite often i met such problems where this was very useful Okay. Yes. Question about that: the y theta in x theta is actually to push some loss function, right? Some some gradient, and then it, it, it we get the gradient uh, in relation to x. You 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 already <coughs> thinking about neural net? What what was y tilde there? Is this is your question? Yeah, why did the what what stands for uh, in, yeah, in, in, in real life? In real life, yes, it, it comes from derivative for, for for example of next layers of neural network in back propagation. And in second, we, we will come to, to the example of neural network. Uh, here it is actually. Here's the example of neural network. <coughs> so if if I have a input x and it prop propagates, I multiply it by matrix of weight, and then by add some bias element wise, and then uh, element wise uh, uh, activation function, and so on. And in the end, uh, I have this function psi, which says it's uh, my error. Um, error or loss function yes it co co compares what comes from the network and what i actually want to, to have y bar is my desired output and in simple uh, case it may be uh, what may be psi it's just uh, normal squared of difference yes of network output with uh, desirable y and the, and this is my error this is all already my uh, not error but my loss function e is my loss function output of value of loss function and now my task is uh, to compute <coughs> first of all uh, uh, gradient of my loss for example with respect to x it's an in intermediate task it's not final Finally, we will like to uh, find gradients with respect to weights, W and biases B. But uh, we can first think about this simple task. So I, I have my function, which is written here. Uh, again, do we rec uh, rec uh, recognize that this row and this uh, picture is the same? Yes. Okay. Yes. You already yes. neural network trained. You are students trained on training of neural network. Okay. Good. Uh, still, I, I will very, very fast uh, say, I, I will say very fast. So I take my X, uh, multiply it by W1 transpose, add bias then uh, apply 
phi one, and then so we, we see the order the order is right. <coughs> so th this is output of the network. This what we have at the at the at this point. Yes, it's not a error yet, and error is a discrepancy between uh, y and desired output. Uh, sorry, f output and d and y desired. Yeah, I had y bar and here y, but it's actually the same. Uh, and I even call this vector a residual. And then I say, uh, maybe I should start writing a little bit. Uh, where is my annotation? Uh, annotate. So, um, just second. So, so I, 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 I may say that my psi, oops, it's not that, that my psi, uh, psi of some vector r, yes, is just the uh, norm r squared. Just a second, I should close door in the other room. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I even can put uh, one half, it will be easy. speaker okay please, please say something because my loud loudspeaker was strangely hi okay can hear you. good 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 it's, it's working okay uh uh okay so so we okay so it's, it's good that i wrote it because then we know what is the gradient with respect to r of psi yes in our uh, particular case it's uh, just r it's just r yes okay and now we we, we come to uh, and now to compute gradient we need the jacobian transport but first we need to compute jacobian if you have uh, our function with this chain uh, so we had W1 applied to our X. I should uh, stop annotating. Uh, we, we have uh, W1 applied to our X. What is Jacobian? It's linear function. It's ja Jacobian just, uh, it was W1 transpose, sorry. Just W1 transpose. Then I apply element wise function. What is Jacobian? It's written here. Yes, if I have element wise function, it's easy to, to see that it Jacobian is just diagonal matrix. So I apply it here and then W2 transpose and phi2 transpose. This is Jacobian of my F. And I have this chain rule. If, if I have uh, psi of some uh, function it's also like f then uh, gradient with respect to x is a jacobian transpose multiplied by gradient of psi we, we already had it yes where yeah, just second just second uh, we had it here yes you remember it was should be R R one here. Uh, I I will come back in a second to our slide and we will discuss your question. Okay, so uh, let me only finish. And Jacobian transpose we know to compute transpose of a matrix. Uh, Jacobian transpose those transposes of those matrices in reverse order. 
And here we already have this uh, back propagation. So I put uh, uh, my derivative of uh, uh, of um, loss function, yes, which is R, and back propagate. I apply it phi two prime. You you see when back propagation, I apply derivatives of my activation factor. Then W two without transpose, then phi one prime, and so on, and get gradient with respect to x. And in the next slide, we will learn how to get gradients with respect to weights W and so on, based on this. Yes, now I am with your with you with, with your question. Um, I have two questions. One, the E is actually uh, the 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 side, right? Because I see, I think it's interchangeable because the uh, gradient of R of E of E in respect to R is actually uh, the gradient of Psi in respect to R. You know, I have not good hearing. I, I really ask somebody in the class, could you please uh, repeat the question in better microphone? Wow, I didn't understand. Yeah, try again, I... try again. Um, the psi and respect to R, right? Psi is actually E. Yeah, yeah, yes, the, the value of psi is E, yes. E, you can so, say it's E in some sense, yes. Because at the end of the last equation, I would put psi, uh, I would put psi instead of E. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, 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 you're right. You see, we, we are using it interchangeably. Yes, here gradient yeah. of e with respect to r, and so in some place uh, we have gradient of psi. Yes, it, it's like function and value of the function. Yes. And another yeah. thing, we have some uh, chain rule here that we actually missed, but maybe it's i is identity r in respect of s. Which is I probably not. Wow. Can anybody repeat this last sentence? He said, I think, something about a uh, differential of R with respect to F. Uh, with respect to F. I think that's what ah, he said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes, it's like I, the identity. I R is F uh, minus constant, yes? Yes. So it's like identity, that's why. Maybe you are right, I, I skipped those important de details that R and F is not the same, but they are almost, the, with respect to differentiation, they are the same. Yeah, just to be more accurate. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much, thank you very much. It's very important uh, remarks. It, they, they help others users to digest. Okay. So I hope everything clear with this slide. And then we are, I, I, I should, what should I do again? Annotate, uh, save, and clear. And then go to the next slide, stop annotation. And then we go to the next slide. We have this slide repeated, but also we have one more thing. We want, uh, we have uh, already gradient with respect to X, or maybe uh, with respect to any intermediate entry, which is similar, we just back propagate shorter. But we want, uh, <coughs> uh, for example, gradient with respect to W1, yes? And if we did denote the input of the, of the activation layer as U1 here, and uh, to compute the gradient as usually, we want differential differential uh, having differential of u u1 it's uh, rather easy we, we already have it it's just uh, jacobian uh, multiplied 
by u one. Ah, uh, uh, he, he is, yes. Gradient of uh, final of output of loss function, yes, with respect to u one. We we can think that we have it. It's very similar that having it with respect to x. It's similar network, just shorter. And then uh, we ask, uh, we, we say that the, here is expression for u1, and we have its differential, having differential of w, uh, which is written here, du1 is dw transpose multiplied by x. And then we go by our lovely uh, trick with trace, because what we want, we want differential of W to have uh, on extreme side of our expression, then everything that remains will be gradient. So uh, this is number, yes? And uh, we always may say that number is equal uh, equivalent to the trace of the number, but in the under trace, we, if we will start moving uh, components in the expression is the circular shift here. Yes, we know circular shift and and the trace uh, doesn't change its value. Well, here what I did here, and here I already may rec recognize my gradients, and this is the final expression for the gradient. Okay, we we like got back. Unfortunately, in our homework uh, on neural, new neural networks, uh, my assistant of previous, yeah, he took uh, power and he expressed um, gradients and everything in new neural network, not, not clearly according to this lecture, but according to standard tutorials in neural, neural network. And this uh, gives you complementary site which uh, I hope it's much shorter yes you immediately get this uh, long matrix expression and uh, multiply by something and get everything you need all gradients you need. okay now you you may digest this part and uh, say two possible things everything is clear or I have a question It's clear. Thank you very much. I want at least one more person to say the same, or maybe to say it, it, it is clear. Yes. No, I got it. And finally, the last uh, transition is uh, this the one. Place of the the last transition. Yes. Um, ah, the, the yeah, yes. Tra uh, we, we have definition, ah, yes, yes. We, we have definition written here, yes? That we can define inner product of two matrices as trace A transpose B, they should be of appropriate size, those two matrices. Actually, they should be of the same size, yes? So there was another cyclic in here, BW1 before X. Uh, I can do, or I, yeah. Oh, you can say the trace of transpose is the same. Be because here you have transpose, then here you already have a uh, right expression. So, so uh, I, I, I would say in this language, I hope you see my mouse. It's trace yes. A transpose B, but it's also trace A B transpose. Yes. Yes. And here it will be more appropriate. Uh, by the way, it's right in in the case of uh, in our course we work with real matrices. If you are learning quantum mechanics and work with with complex matrices, you should be accurate. There will be also complex conjugates if you write such formulas with changing order of transposes. Okay, okay. 
Uh, okay, with this, uh, I think we finished with this small but very important topic. And uh, uh, we can start a general conversation about course, about your homework, uh, everything you want to say. First of all, uh, uh, release tension. Release your tension. Express everything you think about this uh, homework number four, or maybe some open. You 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 know some open question may remain because you also are checking now works of others. And uh, because of, uh, for example, stopping criteria was advised to change in the last moment, then I uh, permit the students who did, who submit earlier, don't uh, resubmit, so it remains. So the, uh, those who, uh, <coughs> who check uh, should somehow to take this into account, I, I guess. And uh, any 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 question about our yesterday discussion about stopping and anything? Is there anybody here of those who discussed on uh, WhatsApp? Okay, I understand that uh, everything is clear. But uh, and in general, can you say a few words about this homework? How it was? I, I know that it was in, intensive, but uh, except of this. Okay, may, maybe, you know, maybe I will assume re recording. Actually, we finished our course. And uh, thank you very much for the participation. And thank you uh, for uh, the interesting uh, course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was my pleasure. It would be much more pleasure to see your faces, and uh, I hope or next year I will meet in class with students, or we will discover better tools when people uh, do see their faces uh, when talking. Uh, okay, thank you very much. And now uh, after, let's do uh, say five minute break. And anybody who wants, uh, and we start a reception hour. Anybody who wants to discuss any question may stay, may just stay on Zoom. 